Greetings everybody and thank you very much for even watching this video that I actually thought to myself for the past couple of days of the fact that this is a very important thing that we all need to think about and I am sharing it on Facebook and might probably even share it on my YouTube channel. I just want to say that with what I have even observed for quite a few years now that I have seen has been also a very touching thing for me. It's not only because of the fact that I understand of the um, the side of life that the disability people go through, for my personal experience as an example, but when you also think about of how much of a st of the struggle that your family go through to help you with your upbringing, and not many people understand of what you are actually going through in your lifestyle for when you're growing up from a childhood, from a rough one, even for when you are as a victim of bullying, or even at times of when you may not have confidence within yourself or even at times when you may not have like not that much of self-esteem with you to actually be able to try to connect with other people because you'll have so much fear that actually is still stuck within you and you don't know of how people will treat you do not you don't know of who to really trust with true friendship and at times you don't know how often you're going to be moving or anything like that well today I am also going I will tell you my um special uh, lifestyle story that I also wrote for future generation kids as well and this is actually to share a message as a matter of fact of if I can overcome problems in my bitterness from my past then I'm very sure that this will be a very big lesson and a very big wake-up call for many others out there who don't really have that much of confidence within themselves as we have seen for many of the past years the number of cases of suicide has been increasing a lot even at times even for people who have been getting diagnosed with disabilities that number is even increasing uh, differently for every number of years but at the same time when I've actually been starting to even teach dancing and many other things at ARC Disability Services in Cairns I've actually been as a good example for many people from ARC Disability Services for the disabled clients that they have there. And I'm always proud of myself for me being as an example for those people there and for the, all those clients. And now I have also observed and seen the fact that everything that I have done to help them has given them more confidence, their self-esteem has built up a lot better and they are now actually even wanting to try more and never give up. And that's what really makes me happy with helping the disability sector. And I will have to admit, I am very thankful for my mum and my dad and also some of my family members as well who have been actually saying that what I'm doing as an example for many other disabled people is a very big thing for everybody, including the families who struggle behind the scenes. And with that, I will understand because of the fact that my family went through the same thing. So this is why for today, this video I'm going to sh that I'm sharing with you now is going to be of this that I also wrote and typed and created when I was also going through youth with the Salvation Army and also when I was going to Royals, when I've even started to go to Royals Church. And they're both located in Cairns um, that I went to. And Royals Church, now I've actually got five roles of things that I do there. One, as a sign language interpreter for the Deaf Ministry. I'm involved with the Men's Ministry the dance ministry, lighting in production, and I also have just recently, earlier um, just during the time frame of August of last year, started to study deployment in leadership. And now I have seen that so many doors have opened up and helped me a lot along the journey. And I, have, I can tell you now, I can already see there's so many more coming my way. But I'm happy that they're coming my way because I want to share myself as an example for more disabled people, like I mentioned before, if I can do it, many others out there who may have a high level of doing things with disabilities will get more of an opportunity even to try and find work. And I do also have my, a job myself. It is hard for families with, dis with, dis with disabled family members to actually get work. And that is totally understandable. But this is a big wake-up call. It may not have been happening yet for many other pa people who have disabled family members to get involved with workplaces but if I can do it I know that many of you can keep trying and you can try and find the place where you not only feel comfortable 
but they will but many of this from the, your workplace will soon start to understand of how you work and when they work when they see of how you work and they see of what you are capable of doing then they will roll you on for that duty when you have more confidence that you want to learn another thing then you can ask when you're ready because that's when things will actually be a lot more powerful for yourself and for your workplace so anyways as for now i'm going to share you this speech that i made and there are some pit, some bits in it that will actually be pretty touching and it will be very emotional at some points because of me also when i was a victim of bullying in school and it does mention that sort of stuff and many other bits in between so thank you very much for even watching this video. Sorry for a long introduction, for, which was just under six minutes. But I do pray that you guys actually even think about this very carefully and that you also share with friends and family. Thank you very much. So the story is from a rough childhood to who I am today. I would like to tell you a story about a special young man that I know that had come a long way from what happened during his childhood. In 1990, his father was in the Air Force and as a mechanical engineer on F-111s. His mum was doing childcare at home, but stopped after six months. At the age of four to six weeks old, their son got diagnosed with epilepsy. When the whole family moved to Wagga Wagga, he was starting to attend year one and the teacher was kind to all other students except him. When he started in year four on Bribey Island at Banksy Beach State School, he was getting bullied and bashed multiple times during the day while at school. When he went to see a doctor at the age of 10 years old, he got diagnosed with Asperger's and autism. When he got halfway through the through year five, the bullying and bashing got even worse. With him being as the victim of the same, sorry, with him being the, the victim of bullying in the exact same school. During the Christmas holidays, when he and his family went to visit his grandparents in Bundaberg, one of the family members from his dad's side of the family, who was his pop, said that everything that the doctor told you is nothing but rubbish. He just needs to straighten himself out. But with how I took it was needs to pull his finger out. <laughs> while he was, <clears throat> while this young man was still attending years five and six, when he got home from school, while everyone else went out to places to visit friends and family or to do other things, when he was home alone, he used to cut his thumb open with a sharp knife after school and also did other types of self-body harm to himself. <laughs> but when he reached a quarter of, of the way through year six, he started to do dancing in his room after school to a song from S Club 7. The name of the song was called Bring It All Back with words saying as follows, don't stop. Never give up. Hold your head high and reach the top. And yeah, so and reach the top. And slowly he stopped doing self body harm to himself. After he and his family moved while being a quarter of the way through year seven, he went to Proserpine State and Proserpine State High School. While he went there. He was also doing okay with his schoolwork, but still getting bullied and teased because of his disabilities. When he reached a quarter of the way through year nine, his family moved again up to Darwin. 
he did the rest of the education up to year 11 at two different schools. At the first school, he got tested, sorry, he got teased but and bullied, but not at the second school. At the age of 16, his parents chose to move again. So they all moved to Cairns, except the boy's eldest sister because she was attending university. When they got to when they got to Cairns, he decided to skip year 12 and just find jobs. He got work with Target at Stockland Shopping Centre, but he wasn't getting many shifts. So he went to get a disability support pension, even though it took him five to seven attempts and psychiatrists to get it. While living in Cairns, he also graduated from seven courses, but by going through two disability employment agencies. In 2012, he started attending the Salvation Army Youth and started to learn a lot about the Bible. Two months after he joined, during one of the nights of the cipher when sorry at the of the cipher events when it was another person's birthday one of the other boys said to him you starting a disabilities hip hop crew and trying to get more disabled people to come to FN Q Dance Academy is to learn about hip hop is nothing but a big fat ugly joke that you should leave cans right now after he heard that from the other young man he felt so deeply shattered and heartbroken to the point that he almost felt like he wanted to commit suicide that night but what he did instead was he spoke to the leader and about what happened in april of 2016 he lost his grandfather and started to attend three churches for treatment and help in september of 2016 So in yes, so at first with with the with the grandfather was in 2016, and in September of 2016, a young man <clears throat> and his friend from the cipher event also lost a very close friend who was the lady who created cipher events, and also was very supportive friend to all backgrounds, such as in different cultures of Torres Strait, Aboriginal, and many more. And her name was Samela Montage. He was so deeply shattered again and was spending all his money in a short period of time till he had no more money left. And until his next pension went in, in the following two weeks. After two months, he, be, he, after two months of beginning, sorry, of two, after two months of being in the blues, he went to church two times a week and was getting help from all the church leaders. In May of 2017, he was preparing a solo hip-hop dance piece for, Nas for National Youth Week. But on the night before the event, he was in a dream, walking through a forest, and saw his grandfather on the right, and saw Samela on the left. Then they said to him, follow us. So he followed them and then he saw them with Jesus. What he did in the dream was he dropped to his knees and confessed by saying to all three of them, 
I don't know what to do, and I am worried that I will make a fool of myself. And he was crying while he was on his knees. When all of the sudden, Samela and his grandfather lifted him up by his hands, and then Jesus did put his right hand on the lad's head and his left hand on the lad's chest. Then Samela put her left hand on the lad's left shoulder and his grandfather put his right hand on the lad's right shoulder. Then they all said to him, they all said to him, don't worry and just go with the flow. We will all be with you all the way. Then he saw a bright light. Then it, it was appearing and coming closer and closer and closer. And then he woke up at three o'clock in the morning. He was sweating, breathing heavily, panting and shaking and filled with so much goosebumps to the point that he couldn't sleep th any further than three o'clock. So he got up and got ready to go to Stockland Shopping Centre during that, during a bit later on that morning. In March of 2017, he received an email with personal invitation to the Presentation Night for Young Achievers Awards in 2017 being held at the Royal on the Park Hotel in Brisbane. When he arrived he and checked in at the hotel, he got, re he got ready for the event. When he got to the dinner, he saw a note at the spot where, at the spot of the table where he was going to be sitting and found out that the note so, and found out from the note that he was one of the semi-finalists with the Community Volunteers category. In June of 2017, on the 8th and the 9th, sorry, on the 8th and the 9th, Arc Disability Services had their show happen at the Coca Theatre which was the event that he was also teaching and dancing a piece for. He had two of his closest friends and also he was and also his parents came to watch the show and they were crying out after the lanterns dance piece and they all told him that the that the dance piece was funny and beautiful. This young man that I'm talking about is me. What this message is saying to everyone here is if you see a ch if you see any children or adults with issues like these or similar, please help them and talk to them and pray for them to and assist them back up onto their feet and encourage them to to come to church to receive limitless helping power from the Lord thank you for listening from Ben Stallard as you may hear that's actually also explaining about my life story but one bit that I forgot to mention was the fact that it also, uh, it didn't actually mention this in here, but this was actually an old one that I created. But I also graduated from TAFE in 2018, studying Cert 3 in Individual Support in Disability. And for disabled people, it is hard for them to understand with some certain levels. But I will tell you now, if I can go through that and if I can get through and get it done, I'm very confident that many of you who want to learn a lot more to get paid work for yourselves, you can do it. 
So with me being as an example for many of you, I would like to say, don't stop, never give up, hold your head high and reach the top and let the world see what you have got. Like it also said in that speech. Thank you very much for watching this video and thank you very much for even sharing this with any friends or family who you think needs this sort of example to get them a very good heads up that I can do it, then so can they. Because this is a very big important thing for many people. And yes, the numbers of disabled people are increasing every year. But if I can do it, so can you. If I can be as a good example, they can do it. Because we all need to actually share with one another of how important it is to get this through to not only the government, but and not only through to many other places, but also to some workplaces as well, to get them to understand that we are just as equal as one another. Because this is really, really, really such a big impact for many families who struggle financially. And because of the fact that we all went through a situation with COVID-19 during last year, this is why we all need to work together. And we also need to think about how can we help the disabled communities financially, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically. So it's five things they need to think about. And at times when they even have people who understand who are in the same workplace that another disabled person can go to, I would recommend as an, as an idea and also as a suggestion to any place. With me being as an example at this point for where I work, send somebody, if, they, if you do get somebody who has a disability, send them to a person who understands their environment because they will get a better connection within the workplace and they can explain things within a way they understand because this is a very, very big, important thing we all need to learn. I'm not saying this because of the fact that many people may not understand this, but I'm saying it as the fact that with if, because of how much I have helped other disabled people within the community of Cairns, they actually can see me as their only guideline. And they at times they can even see other people who also have disabilities, but who are also in workplaces as another good example. And they always, that's when their minds change around. That's when their minds also say, if he can do it, I know that I'll be able to do it. Then that's when their confidence levels starts to increase. Same with their way of thinking. And the more we teach them and the more we connect them, the better their life will become and the more easier it will be for their families. So God bless you all. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I'm very thankful for you guys for listening into this special speech that I did as well today. And feel free to share with your friends and your family if you know of anyone who's going through a similar situation. Because if I can overcome the problem, so can they. God bless you all and thank you very much for watching and thank you for participating. And I hope you do enjoy this video if you have been watching. If you would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you're more than welcome to. If you would like to share with any other friends or family or even people that you know from churches or any other camp groups who need this sort of advice and need this sort of help for them to listen to, go for it because it will help the disability community a lot. Thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for listening. It really means a lot to me and it will also mean a lot for a lot more of the disability sector. God bless you all. Thank you very much for watching.